The Dunk City Effect is sponsored by the Florida Gulf Coast University Foundation, supporting programs that advance student achievement, academic excellence, and community engagement. The law firm of Goldstein Buckley, Seckman Rice and Pertz, personal injury attorneys and neighbors since 1962. Justice starts now. Shula's Steakhouse, themed after the 1972 Miami Dolphins' perfect season. Shula's, America's Steakhouse, still undefeated, located in the Hilton, Naples. City Mattress, night after night since 1964. City Mattress is there, providing support and a good night's sleep. Naples and Estero Urgent Care Centers, offering comprehensive medical care for families in both Lee and Collier Counties. And by Algenol Biofuels, a global biotech company commercializing algae technology for the production of the four most important fuels. Comer. Up the top! The Florida Gulf Coast shocks the world. Are you Woo! kidding me? And the fans have decided the SB goes to Florida Gulf Coast over Georgetown. The Dunk City Effect. What happens after a team shocks the world? They went from the hunters to the hunted. Just like that. We had a, a bullseye on our back going into every game, which was a lot different. We weren't sneaking up on everybody. It's Dunk City now. It's way different than it ever was before, and it's even better. You have high expectations now. You don't want to disappoint anybody. Basketball then put us on the map, and then people found out that, hey, this is a pretty special place. Dunk City gave us the visibility to really show the state and the nation exactly what Florida Gulf Coast University was all about. Getting into Florida's Gulf Coast University may not be a slam dunk anymore. We have seen just a tremendous increase in the number of applications. We truly have scholar athletes, not just student athletes. Revenues up national notoriety up. You come out every night and it's a sellout crowd. The atmosphere here was, was about as good as you can get. Dunk City is now a phenomenon. Alico Arena is the hottest place in Southwest Florida and FGCU has become a destination for college kids across the nation. FGCU is maturing and growing into something great. There's just, uh, just a vibrancy throughout the campus and uh, that, uh, that's a result of everyone being involved, getting caught up in the Dunk City spirit. Go Eagles! In the wake of the 2013 Eagles Sweet 16 run, the Dunk City effect continues to inspire a growing wave of regional pride and unity. It all comes back to that experience at the Sweet 16 and the term Dunk City being developed. Uh, it does define who we are now. FGC has become Southwest Florida's school and just to be a part of the transition and to watch it go from nothing into the program it is now has been, been very surreal. Next to having children, this is pretty much the most exciting thing I've ever experienced. One of the nicest things of the Dunk City Run has been really the way we've been able to galvanize Southwest Florida in ways that I've heard from natives uh, it's never been before, and that's, that makes you feel good. It's really changed the definition in a lot of ways of the community itself. It's extraordinary. The region needs a, uh, a unifying force, a unifying uh, energy that uh, enables it to work together better. And I think Dunk City had that effect on Southwest Florida. Making the Ace on Championship and going to March Madness, it's just done a lot for this, you know, Fort Myers in general, it's just amazing. Definitely has an exciting spirit, a sense of community pride, a sense of being a part of something that continues to get better each day. With our reputation going up, every function's reputation gets a positive halo, which kind of inspires us in the other fields to do more. Certainly supported and buoyed in a very significant way by the Dunk City phenomenon, the level of optimism and the level of pride and the level of bring on the future, we're ready, we're doing fantastic things and we want to do more has never been more palpable than it is now. I have worked at five universities. This is the best job that I have ever had. This is the best place that I have ever been. It makes you feel really good about yourself, you know, um, kind of just how much we can impact an entire school and community just by putting a basketball in the hoop. Often great success is accompanied by great change, and that proved to be the case here in Dunk City. Nowhere was that change more immediate than in the men's program itself. Uh, they have a great team. 
They'll win 20 games again next year, whether I'm here or not. Breaking news first and four, the man who led the FGCU men's basketball team to the Sweet 16 is leaving. Coach Andy Enfield is heading west, signing a multi-million dollar deal with the University of Southern California. It was devastating to me. He's the reason why I came here. You know, I, like I said, uh, he made me who I am today as a player. He's somebody I looked up to. It's tough to deal with, um, but we'll bounce back. We'll have a lot of great coaches apply for the position. I'm sure we'll come up with a great one. There is a new mayor of Dunk City. FTCU hired a new men's basketball coach. We got jumping Joe Dooley. Everything's fine. <laughs> Look to two things here with the hiring of Joe Dooley. Experience and a track record for winning. The number one assistant at Kansas. Basketball royalty. It showed just how much the school and the program had arrived. Coach Dooley is very fiery, that's what I could say. Very fiery. The pressure shifted. Uh, for the first time, we weren't underdogs. Uh, we had to play from a favorite type environment. It's NCAA or bust. It's you have to play a certain style of basketball or people will give you a hard time. I get asked all the time, how many dunks do you have in the year? How many dunks do you have in the year? Everybody wanted to go as hard as possible at us. They wanted to dunk the basketball, obviously, at us so they could yell at their dunk city, whatever. I don't think people realized what a tough spot Coach Dooley was in. I mean, how do you follow a team that made history? As the 2013-14 season began, that was the question on everybody's mind. Legions of fans, the media, and basketball aficionados everywhere were waiting for the revamped Eagles response. When the year started last year, I think everybody had uh, high hopes that we were going back to the NCAA tournament. The high, you know, it starts out right at the beginning of the season. You know, we have Dunk City after dark. We're on ESPN for Midnight Madness. We had a whole bunch of nationally televised games right off the bat. Everybody wanted to know, you know, what is Dunk City up to? Where are they at? What are they going to do it again? Throughout Dunk City, and especially here in Alico Arena, the attitude and atmosphere were markedly different than in years past. It's completely night and day. My freshman year, I remember going to Miramar Outlets and trying to hang our posters up to get people to know when our games were, and most of the store owners were, told us they didn't want that. They didn't want it on their windows. Our crowds were not that excited or into the games. We didn't have a lot of people there. When I got here in 07, um, I would have literally 50, 100 tickets for every game and I would go out and uh, uh, give them away to get people to come to our games. Uh, that's no longer the case. They had one crowd of 4,500 last year, and now it's a regularity. They get sold out all the time now. So you have to go get your ticket fast so you won't get one. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. This is the uh, four standing room only crowd so far this season. People got to the understanding that if they didn't get their tickets early, they, by the time they showed up just before tip off, it was way too late. We got our tickets probably like two weeks ago. Well, the smallest crowd's been 3,883. Tonight's going to be close to 5,000. We definitely strive off the energy in the gym and having a lot of people there. Oliko Arena, 4,500 plus, is a phenomenal atmosphere. I mean, unless you're going to play at the really big programs, that's about as good an atmosphere as you can have. It's an unbelievable atmosphere. I mean, I've been in pretty, some pretty good atmospheres, and, and the fans have been unbelievable. Having everybody actually excited for basketball games instead of, oh, you guys play tonight. People knew when we played. This is what you expect when you go to FGCU right here. This atmosphere, the students, everything. Fans give us life. They give us our energy. We feed off them. Um, when you see them just giving it their all, you want to give your all. And you know, they're going to bring it, so we have to bring it as well. When we win the Sweet 16 again, yeah. then we'll maybe take the mask maybe, off. Yeah. Early in the season, the Eagles would experience some growing pains. FGCU had to get used to not having their leading scorer. Also, they weren't a very deep team last year. They had any foul trouble, any injuries, of which they had both. All right, they were really up against it. It took a little while to, to get into the rhythm. A lot of that has to do with you know, a new coach. The coach's personality and the team's personality have to become one. So it's another thing that took a while last year. People come at you with a different sense of energy and a different sense of purpose when you are Dunk City as opposed to just FGCU. As the season came along, we kind of figured it out and were able to use the other team's momentum and how hard they wanted to play us. It kind of got us energized and we were able to use the same thing that they wanted to beat us and we didn't want anyone to beat us. Once conference play picked up and we're selling out almost every single game at Alico Arena, our guys are getting comfortable with the system. Everybody's healthy again. We gradually worked our way back up. Once we got it clicking, it was, it was off and running.
there today and was just, just great. We heard it was a sellout, so we had to give them a show. Hats off to Mercer, you know, they're a great team. You know, they, they came out there, they gave it the best shot. I mean, we just, we played ridiculously well tonight. So, I mean, we meet up with them again. I mean, we just have to wait and see what happens. There was an adjustment period throughout the year, and yet they still managed to win the regular season conference title, something they've never done before. They're the ASEN champions! Woo! Go Eagles! Mark Mercer! The FGCU men's basketball team is in the ASEN championship game, but if you were hoping to watch it in person, you could be out of luck. Tickets for Sunday's title game already sold out. Joe Dooley continuing the tradition of a great basketball program being built here as well. This is it, we're coming for the championship. Yeah, getting rowdy. FGCU now stands just one win away from a return trip to the NCAA tournament. All they need is a victory today against Mercer. Mercer's going down. Last two years, FGCU has knocked Mercer out of the A-Sun tournament. Finals last year, semis the year before. Back in Macon, they want revenge. Mercer's going to be a great opponent. The Eagles are here to play their A game, and so I'm, I'm just really proud of them. We had the same mindset, you know, we're going to come out here, we're going to try to, we know we're going to play as hard as we can, we're going to leave it on the court. This is the Atlantic Sun Championship. The winner gets to dance, and they, both these teams, want that tremendously. This 4,600 plus, maybe largest crowd in this building's history. FGCU has started cold, 0 for 5 from 3. First half, things just didn't fall for us the way we wanted to. Um, they definitely got rebounded. Boy, well, Mercer's everywhere defensively. An 11-0 run for the Mercer Bears from Macon. That first half pretty much dug a hole for ourselves. Florida Gulf Coast knows they need to be the aggressor here in the second half. it away. Thompson slams it down. Welcome to Dunk City. Clover the off. We knew this Florida Gulf team was explosive, but right now they're showing it in every different aspect of the game. They're having their way offensively. I, mean, I thought we did a great job the second half bring it back as close as we could, maybe even giving us a chance to win that game. And now it is a three-point game, a one-possession game. Can Florida Gulf Coast psychologically get over the battle of getting to the top, tying this game up? Under a minute for Dunk City. Thompson, desperation. Time running out. The Mercer Bears, who were ousted the last two years by FGCU in their final A-Sun game. I really think those kids at Mercer would have signed off five years off their life to be there at GCU, and they played like it. Sometimes it just, you know, it doesn't happen for you that day, and it just didn't happen for us. Mercer beat FGCU 68-60 to in the upsetting loss at Alico Arena for the ASUN championship game. You know, it hurts. It's something you really don't want to see, somebody cutting down your nets. And I think that's going to motivate us to be a better team. We lost to a team like Mercer, who had a great veteran group who we had played the year before, and, and uh, they went out and beat Duke. It made us feel, I think, even more understanding that we had a great year, even though we didn't go to the NCAAs. Well, despite this difficult loss to a talented Mercer squad, FGCU still had hopes of returning to an NCAA tournament. And now those hopes rested on the wings of the women's squad. They were the rock of this athletic department. Um, from day one. In most schools, it's usually men's basketball provides exposure opportunities for women's basketball. We actually became the exact opposite. Our women's team got so successful and they're the only school in the history of Division I in their first seven years to make the postseason. The irony with Dunk City is that if Dunk City has had a negative effect, it may very well have been on the women's basketball program because the women went from the marquee sport and the most successful sport at the school to being pushed 
not into the background, but at least to the side momentarily. Four years ago, the girls had the biggest crowds and the boys didn't. A lot of people know us for our offense because of our style is unusual and uh, we don't look like many other teams offensively. When you take 44 threes in one game, guys like me that love to shoot the basketball, I want, I want to play in that system. It's different here. We have a significantly different style. You don't have to be the most athletic or the quickest or the strongest or all that. But, you know, If you want to work hard and you want to be rewarded for what you're doing, then this is, I mean, this is a great place for you to go. There's definitely a toughness about many of our kids. And you know, it starts with the Sarah Hansen, uh, her toughness. There's some mirroring aspects when you have a leader like that. You want to be as tough as, as that kid is being. And uh, uh, fortunately, that toughness paid off for us this year. Coach Semesco is one of our six founding coaches. Whenever I show my heart, I'm opening up my heart. Yeah. He's not only won, he's won in a very entertaining fashion to break the records that our team has, 22 three-pointers in a game, and you know, having shattered all the records in Division One in a very short period. Uh, he's developed not only success, but an opportunity for our fans to really engage uh, into the team. After the game, you'll always see the women go up and talk to their fans, and you know, a lot of the people have really gathered them as sort of like second children in their families. We have amazing fans that do really know they know our system maybe even better than what we do because they've been here watching Carl since he started. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty neat situation. We have a very loyal base who know our kids and really care about our kids. And, uh, um, you know, they kind of feel like they're part of the family and, and they pull for them like they're part of the family. When you have that community base, uh, people come, win or lose, but they haven't done much losing, have they? FGCU has won the A-Sun regular season title for a fourth consecutive year. The Eagles followed that regular season title clincher up with another OT thriller over Stetson in the A-Sun tourney title game. And it was on the West Lafayette, Indiana, and another berth in the NCAA tournament. We are all pretty excited about coming back here to Indiana since we do have so many Midwest girls. We've got one family, the Haas family's got, I think, 20 family members here for this game. One, two, yeah. three. Our fans from Florida were able to come there too, so it was a great feeling to have that support. I think they had to get extra tickets. Uh, they used all the allotment. That's great. Bring them on. We need everybody. <laughs> They're going to stay warm. I think we shoot the ball well. We play good defense like we nearly always do. I think uh, we can take the Cowboys down. Well, you know, we like to have a good time. And again, it all centers around the excitement that these women bring to this whole game. So yeah, we got to have fun. From the Sunshine State, have just one player over six feet tall. That's Whitney Knight. She is listed as a guard. They start five of them. <laughs> Opening tip controlled by the Eagles. Eagles trying to take the lead for the first time in this ball game. The team in blue is the quicker team. They are the 12th seed, Florida Gulf Coast, going right around Oklahoma State about any time they want in this ball game. Another three-pointer falls for the Eagles. Whitney Knight coming alive here in this second half. And Florida Gulf Coast has found their rhythm offensively. I think it was more of a surprise even to themselves that they were beating Oklahoma State in the final minutes. It's going to be a fight to the finish and Jimmy this is exactly what we expected. Florida Gulf Coast has the ball. Knight shot up won't go and we are going into overtime. It was exciting. I don't think that there was a fan in there that left with their heart rate where it was supposed to be. I just think it was a team that was just a touch too young to win the game. And they came up just one point short in overtime. We let it get away. I mean, give credit to Oklahoma. They, Oklahoma State we got a little back on our heels and that's when they just came at us hard and took it away. You know, they had nothing to hang their heads about. They played a great game and uh, we know we're in a position where we can compete with some of the very best teams. When a team in a program loses the best player in program history, not many coaches think that they're going to be better the next year. But I think deep down, Coach Semesco thinks that the women's team 
can be better this year than even they were last year with Sarah Hansen. Last season was one both Eagles basketball teams and their fans can be proud of. And still, the impact of the 2013 men's Sweet 16 tourney run ripples beyond the basketball court, across the university, and into the community. There's no denying the fact that what took place last March um, with the run has had a significant impact on, on the visibility of the campus. We saw a tremendous number of hits to our website and then ultimately we saw a huge increase in the number of applicants. It definitely did help me pick out the school because that's how people know this school by Dunk City. More students are applying to FGCU than ever before. What was actually a little bit surprising to me was how many media members wanted to talk to the students about you know how did this impact you and your decision to come here. It started with the Sweet 16. That's that's what made me look into it. I personally saw their run during March Madness and how they became Cinderella and all that and I was very impressed by that. The number of freshmen applying to the university increased by about 30%. I didn't really know of it until Dunk City actually happened. I was like, oh, it's that school. More and more students are from outside the immediate five county area. The academic profile of these students is better than any class that we've ever admitted. Their average GPA jumping from a pretty steady 3.3 to a 3.71. What drove them to our website was the fame of Dunk City. What brought them to our campus here for the fall of 14 was the very, very strong academic program. We're getting more students choosing us as their first institution. More than 10,000 hopefuls have already applied for the coming school year, making it harder than ever to get in. We've heard all the stories about it changing, how many people were applying. All those numbers are true, they went up, but really it went beyond that. Um, our employment pools, people applying to work here changed. Uh, they're from all over the country now. We probably are between a million and a million and a half dollars in athletics in revenue this year versus a year ago. And that's through uh, season tickets, that's through Eagles Club memberships, it's through corporate sponsorships. Schools that have successes, that they've been doing that for years. We just have grown into that. When I first got here, I used to talk to the bookstore director and I say, why are there no FGCU shirts? Why can't we buy them at Target? Why can't? And they said, well, it's just not there yet. Now you walk around, you see Dunk City shirts everywhere you go. Everybody around the community wants to be a part of it. Everything's blue and green. It's all over the place. I've approved over 2,000 new products uh, just with the FGC logo on it since March of 2013. Leading up to that point, an annual approval rate of about 200. More people realize that it's a good business to be in selling FGCU merchandise product. You see the FGCU garbs in Target. You know, you see it at all the sporting goods stores and stuff, and so dramatically big difference on that account. The alumni base of FGCU growing each year, those people are now becoming parents, and so they're having kids, and we've gotten a lot of requests to have um, merchandise for kids. FGCU! The following year after Dunk City, 5.5% of our alumni gave to the university, doubling the number of alumni who participated in giving to the university because they were energized, because they were, they felt the spotlight along with the team. They were proud of their institution. They were proud to wear the FGCU colors and logos. They were recognized in airports around the country. The marketing that it, that it gives the university because there's now people wearing uh, FGCU logo product out there all over the country, all over the world. Um, is something that I don't know that we can really put a value uh, dollar-wise on. You can't buy the publicity that FGCU got 11 or 12 nationally televised games last year. I mean, that's staggering. The uh, economics of this is a regional economic driver. Now we're attracting various kinds of industry. Now on the eve of the 2014-2015 basketball season, the excitement on campus and in the community is palpable. The expectations are running high, and for good reason. I think we made some progress this summer. We were fortunate to have everybody here for the whole second summer session. Uh, we're allowed to work with guys for two hours a week, so we had them on the court. We have a chip on our shoulder this year already. You know, we're already wanting to be the best team a lot better than last year. We want to not feel that, that pain in losing again. So, I mean, I know we're going to be ready to go no matter what day it is, and we're fired up about it, and we're excited. I can almost guarantee wins with the talent they have and the abilities that every player on the team has and the cohesiveness that we've really formed as a program. You know, almost everybody's back. 
Um, the freshmen that, that uh, Coach Dooley and his staff have brought in um, are extremely heralded. They're very, very excited about that group. Comer and Thompson are the best backcourt probably in mid-major basketball. For those that fell in love with Dunk City, I think this year's team will play more like Dunk City than last year's. They're deeper, they're more athletic. Uh, a second year of the coach and the players, you know, getting fully on the same page. They're gonna win the conference, I would say. If they don't, there should probably be a congressional investigation. We're in a position that we would be very disappointed at the end of the year if we weren't going to the NCAAs. Uh, once we get there, we think that we're gonna be a team that no one's gonna to wanna to see in their bracket, uh, and then hopefully we can have results like we've done in the past. You just wanna go out there and prove to people that um, FGC is still here, we're still Dunk City, and just to show everybody what we're made of. We are now on a map in a way where an, a, a plant or a company who wants to move from north to south may never have considered southwest Florida. And suddenly just the geography occurs to them because of all of the national news about Dunk City and this little town, Fort Myers, and this little university that could. You look at all these people that are around here, if it wasn't for Dunk City, they wouldn't be here. Now enables us to tell our story in a new way particularly about our educational offerings. We're more than an athletic institution. I mean, our GPA for students is a 3.3. We are a part of this community. Over the next 50 years, it's going to be a very different place because of Florida Gulf Coast University. Not only the nation, but the entire world is watching us, and they will love what they will see from us into the future.